Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about stack omni antennas. In my previous video, I was able to stack a pair of omni antennas, which are the Pagoda, and that's with using this PCB match 5.8 GHz splitter or combiner. Basically, it matches the impedance of the two antennas together to output 50 ohms which makes it a perfectly tuned antenna and the advantage of doing this is to have an additional 3 dB of gain which basically doubles the signal of a single omni antenna for some time I've been wanting to do the same for omni antennas which are linear ones like this rubber ducky which is basically a piece of wire signal element of about 5 mm in length and basically we could use the same method to stack them and match them to output 50 ohms then I stumbled upon this product on Banggood so it says here is a 5.8 GHz and 5 dB Omni antenna and it has the RPSMA male plug what I've done is to look at the inside and you would notice difference right away in the normal antenna there's a single element but for this one here there's a stack pair of elements basically there's one here and another one here and in between there's a coil and basically this coil acts as a load and in some way it works as an impedance matching mechanism pretty much like this one here which is a match network of two antennas however I'm skeptical about how well this will work so in this video we're going to put this to the test to verify if this antenna is really better than this one to see if there is really an increased gain due to the stack elements as compared to the single element I'm going to do an outdoor view test however I'm not going to fly to great distances so I will need to limit the output power of the transmitter and to do that I have this new toy which arrived in my mailbox yesterday this is a variable attenuator as you can see it, the display shows that it's set to 20 dB of attenuation I'm going to change that to 22 dB which should reduce 200 milliwatts to 1.24 milliwatts I'll post the calculation on top of this video so you could see how we arrive at 1.24 milliwatt. Anyway, to change the setting, I just have to click on this one. And now the cursor is at the first numeric value before the decimal place. And I'm going to change that to 22. Yep, it's 22 now. And to confirm, I just press OK. And that's done. As I don't want to pull out my 6 GHz spectrum analyzer, I'm using this receiver to have a visual glance of the output power now let me power on the 200 milliwatts transmitter without the attenuation and let's do a channel scan so you could see the amplitude right here at 5945 frequency now let me connect this transmitter to the attenuator Alright, let's do a channel scan again with 22 dB of attenuation See the amplitude has been greatly reduced it's not a lot here because of the close range between the output power and the receive port here but it's going to make a big difference Alright, to test the antennas I will first put one of the antennas at the cutoff trunk over there and it will transmit 5.8 GHz and here I have the data logger on my drone 
it will lock the RSI signal strength from this receiver as well as the GPS coordinates. To prevent interference to the 5.8 GHz collected by the data logger, I can't use the ProSight 5.8 GHz video system. Instead, I will be using the 1.2 GHz video system here, which consists of this micro 1.2 GHz transmitter, the inverted V antenna, and the micro camera. This way, the transmission of 1.2 GHz will not interfere with the data collection, which is monitoring the received signal strength for 5.8 GHz. And to fly this drone on 1.2 GHz, I'll be using my Fat Shark goggles, which is running a 1.2 GHz video receiver and an LNA low noise amplifier to amplify the signal. Because the output of this transmitter is really low, it's only outputting about 50 milliwatts of power. I'll fry this drone along this path to plot the radiation pattern of the antenna under test, which will be placed right there. All right, I'm back at home and I have the radio module here connected to the APM and the receiving module connected to my computer. And it looks like it's transferring the logs wirelessly to my computer. After using the Python program to process the data logs, we have radiation pattern plotted against the GPS coordinates. On the left is the one for the standard rubber ducky antenna. And on the right is the collinear 5 dB antenna. As you can see here at the 60 meters mark, there's a red spot here. It's not just one dot, it's multiple dots, which indicate that the video is really bad. However, on the collinear omni antenna radiation plot, it's still light green. So we could see that overall, the rubber ducky has a poorer video signal as compared to the collinear omni antenna. That concludes the gain test of the 5dB collinear antenna, that's what I call it. Although some people call it a normal dipole with just having a coil as a load in between. But it works pretty much like a collinear antenna. And if you notice on the label here, the brand of this antenna is Maple Wireless. And if you have seen the latest video by RC Shim, another YouTuber who's into antennas, he mentioned about a patch which is released by Maple Wireless. So this is the same product from the same manufacturer. So what good is this antenna for, you ask? If you're flying analog and if you're using one of these micro VTX, you could replace this antenna here with this one. Just cut the cable and solder it to the VTX and you will have higher gain. Because of the radiation pattern is a flattened donut rather than a donut. So if you're doing a lot of acrobatic moves, it may not be ideal. And if you're doing this, be sure to hit string the antenna without this plastic conduit on the outside. The center frequency of this antenna is shifted upwards meaning that the center frequency will be too high. To lower the center frequency, you can't increase the length of these elements. However, you could put on a heat string, like this one here, and that would shift the center frequency back to 5.8 GHz. And for the rest of us who are flying DJI digital system, you could use it if your drone is having linear polarization setup. I will be flying with the antennas at the top and the bi-quad directional patches at the bottom. Circular polarization isn't a big thing anymore. It's a big thing on analog systems but not as much an impact for HD systems like the DJI. This is evident in drones like the TransTech Peter, where the drone 
is using linear dipole antennas to shed off some weight. Alright, that's all I have for this video. Thank you for watching and see you again.